Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about how to plot a code tree. So, before plotting the code tree, let us have a look at the states of encoder. So, this is the encoder that we designed in our previous video. The input is applied here, and here we will have the three message bit, that is M, M1, and M2. M is nothing but a current message bit, whereas M1 and M2 is representing the previous two successive message bits. Now we will have the two encoded outputs that is named as X1 and X2 here, and on the basis of X1 and X2 we will get our final output. So this is how the entire encoder works. Now let's discuss about states of encoder. So here the previous message bit that is M1 and M2. Like here, represents the state of encoder. Whereas, if we discuss about the current message bit, that is nothing but M, then it affects two things. That is the state of shift register, as well as encoded outputs. That is X1 and X2. Now, we know that here are the two previous message bit. That's why we can say that total number of combination that are possible will be equal to two raised to two. That is nothing but four. So four possible combination are there. So on the basis of the values of M one and M two, there will be. Four possible combination that will starts from zero zero, zero one, one zero, and finally one one. So these are the possible four combination. Let's assume that the zero zero is representing the state A. Zero one is representing the state B. Similarly, one zero is representing the state C, and one one is representing the state. D. So these are the four states of shift register. We will use this table to plot the code tree. So let's plot the code tree. So here is the table that we evaluated, which is representing the states on the basis of different values of M one and M two. Now, X one is evaluated on the basis of M XOR M1 XOR M2, and the value of X2 that is evaluated like M XOR M2. Now here is an input that is given to us that is one one and zero, and these are the three message bit that is M M1 and M2 of an encoder that we discussed earlier. Now let us assume that M1 and M2 Are initialized with zero. Now, if we shift the first bit, that is one, here, then it will look like one zero and zero. Now, we know that the shifting would happen at the regular interval. So, if the shifting occurs, then this zero will be discarded, and this zero will go here, and this one will go here, and it will look like one. Zero. Now, what would be the value of this M? This is filled by this second bit, that is one. So it will be go here, and here is one, one, and zero. Likewise, the shifting will be performed, and this zero will be discarded. This one will be shifted here, and this one will be shifted here. So it will look like one one, and now the third bit is remaining. That is zero here. So this zero will comes at this position. So it will be zero one and one. Similarly, after a regular interval of time, the shifting will be happen, and this one will be discarded, and 
this one will go here and this zero will go here so it will be look like zero one and we don't have any other message bit that's why it will be vacant now if we calculate the value of x1 and x2 on the various values of m m1 and m2 from these two expressions then we will get that the value of x1 here is equals to 1 and the value of x2 here is equals to 1 so we will get the x1 x2 that is 1 1 similarly the value of x1 here will be 0 and the value of x2 would be 1 so the combination would be x1 x2 that is 0 1 here also the value of x1 will be 0 and the value of x2 will be 1 so its value will comes out to be 0 1 and since we don't have the value of m here that's why we can't evaluate the value of x1 x2 here let's understand that how to evaluate states for each of these steps so here the value of m1 is 0 and the value of m2 is 0 so from this table if the value of m1 is 0 and m2 is 0 then the state will be a so we can say that here is a state here is 1 and 0 so 1 and 0 indicates state c so here we can say that it is state c here is m1 value is 1 and m2 is 1 so 1 1 is indicating state d and finally the value of m1 is 0 m2 is 1 that is here so it indicates the state b so this is how we can evaluate the state on the various basis of m1 and m2 now let's plot the code tree but before plotting the code tree just have a look at the two rules that is if the input value is 0 that is the value of m is 0 then we will have to go to upper branch and if the value of m is 1 then we need to go to lower branch so initially we are at state a that is here and the value of m here is nothing but 1 since the value of m is 1 so we have to go to lower branch so this is the lower branch and what is output here the output is 1 1 so here we will write output now let's analyze that what will be the next state so we can say that the next state is c so let me write it as c and what is the value of m it is 1 since it is 1 so we have to go to lower branch so it is lower branch and what is the output value it is 0 1 so here is 0 1 then what is the next state it is state d so here is state d now what is the value of m here it is 0 since it is 0 so we have to go to upper branch so here is the upper branch and what is the output value the output value is 0 1 now what is the next state it is state b so we will write b here now there is no next state so this is all about the plotting of code tree if you like my content then do subscribe my channel and please hit the like button thank you